In this episode, the sockets will be able to join to chat rooms, and then they can only send and receive messages to and from sockets that are joined to the same room. Plus, they will be able to send private messages as well, which can be only read by one single socket. To demonstrate how chat rooms work, I will create three rooms manually, the apple room, the banana room and the carrot room. I will list them above the list of the connected sockets, inside of the left div element, like that, so that if I check the chat component in the browser, I can see these three room names there. The plan is that after I click on the room name, I will be in that room, and so whatever message I send, it will only be received by the users in the same room, and whatever message I receive, that will be one written by someone in the same room. As a first step, let's just grab the room name after clicking on it, so I give an onClick attribute to each of the list items, and define the entering room function above. So I create a new room variable there, the value will be the link text, which I grab with the e.target.text content, and it will alert the name of the room. This way I can make sure that the new room variable really has the room name as its value. And since it does, I am now ready to send it to the server, which will then put the socket in the room with that name. But before I do that, instead of alerting the room name, I want to display it on the right div element, so that I will know in which room I am currently in. That would require adding another state, called current room, and the starting value of the state will be general chat, because that's how I'm going to call the default room. And in the entering room function, instead of alerting it, I set the current room state to new room. Finally, down in the JSX, right next to the chat messages, I display the value of the current room variable in parentheses. And now, back to the browser, if I click on one of these three room names in the left div, I can see the same room name displayed in the right div. And to increase the user experience even more, I set the cursor to pointer for each of the link items, and this way it will be more intuitive that the room name is clickable. I can check the browser again, and here now if I hover over the room names, I see this pointer icon. Yeah. Now if I click on one of the room names, I need to let the server know about that too, so that it can put me in that room. I can simply do that by emitting the new room variable inside of the entering room function. The event will be called room entered and the server will listen to that event, and it grabs the incoming variable and puts the socket in the room. The way the server does that is this join method. Its argument is the room identifier, which can be a string or also a number. And if I want to put a socket into more different rooms in the same time, for some reason, then I could use an array of room IDs as argument, instead of just one single room name, but I don't need that right now. Since the server doesn't keep track of which socket belongs to which room, it won't know automatically which message should go where. And that's why the client will send the name of the room it's currently in as another property of the chat message object next to the username and the message text, for which I add it to the new message object with the value of the current room state. And up where I create the state, I set its initial value to an empty string. And back in the server, I will use this room ID in the so-called to method, which is the other room-related method next to the join. The io.to room name will emit the message only to the clients that have been previously joined to that specific room. And since I want every client to send messages only to the clients in the same room, I can emit the message to the same room name the sender client is currently in. Plus, so that every client goes to the general chat room immediately upon connection, that's the one I want to be the default option. I join every socket to the room called general chat here, right after they have been added to the user's array. And now the chat rooms are already supposed to work, but before checking the browser, I want to add two little changes. First, if a client enters a room, then I want the clients that are already there to get notified about that. So inside of the room entered function, before the new client actually gets into the room, I send that notification as a message object with the new message event, the same I'm using for regular chat messages, using the socket ID as username. And the other thing I want to change, before trying this out in the browser, is that the message list state, which stores the previous messages in the room the client has been, 
that needs to be emptied upon entering a new room so that the client won't see the messages of the previous room. And the conversation will start from zero. Now I'm ready to open three windows. I go to the chat component in each. And then if I type a message before doing anything, all the clients will receive it. Then with two of the clients, I click on the Apple room. This will enter the room. And if I send a message from one of these two, then the third one, which is not in the room, it will not receive the message. And if I enter a banana room with two clients and send a message from there, then the client that remained in the Apple room, it won't receive the message. So it looks that now I have three working chat rooms. Next, I implement private chatting so that if I click on one of the connected sockets, then I can only send messages to that client. An important thing to know in advance that the way Socket.io works is that it automatically puts every client in a room and the name of that room is the client's own Socket ID. And thanks to that feature, the way private chatting works is very similar to chat rooms, just this time the room name will be a long string instead of Apple or Banana. So here where the connected clients are listed, I add an onClick attribute with the same entering room function that I'm using for the chat rooms and set the cursor to pointer here as well. And I have to be sure that there is no space or anything between these tags here where the user ID is listed, otherwise that space will be added to the ID and then the server won't be able to find the other user based on that. And that should already work fine. After rearranging the links a little bit, so that I'll be able to enter the general chat room as well, I can open two browser windows, and if I click on one ID in a browser, I can see the room changing, that should be the client that receives the message, then I send the message and I can see that it appears on the other screen. It doesn't matter in which room the other client is, because every client is now in two rooms simultaneously, it's in one of the rooms I defined manually, and they are also sitting alone in the room which has the same name as their socket ID. That's basically how private messaging works, although there is one more room-related method I'm going to use, and that's the leave method, because the server can not just join a socket to a room, but also take it out from a room. And I can show why is that important. I have two windows here. If I enter the apple room with the first client, then change to the banana, then to the carrot, and then with the second client I also enter the apple and send a message in the apple room, then the first client in the carrot room will receive that message too, because even if it has entered the carrot room, it's also in the apple room in the same time. So that's why I want the server to not just join a client to a new room, but also make it leave from the old one. And what I do for that is that in the entering room function in the chat component, I will have an old room variable next to the new room, its value will be the value of the current room state, and I emit to the server both rooms, the old room and the new room as well. Which here I can write this way, but since the variable name on the left side is the same as the one on the right side, I can simplify this and send the two variables in this format instead. And that's all I change on the front end. On the back end I find the room entered event, and instead of just one incoming room variable, I will have an old room and a new room here. The very first thing I do is calling the leave method, so that the socket won't be in the old room anymore. And after that I send a message to the old room, for the clients that remained in the room, that the socket just left the room. And I think I changed the name here, from socket ID I use news, like this is an extra notification that nobody has sent us a message. And at the end of this room entered event, the server puts the socket in the new room. Let's test it again, with two browser windows. With the first client, I enter the Apple room, then I see that the second client gets the news that the other one left the general chat. Then the first one enters banana, and then carrot. The second one enters Apple, and if I send a message from the Apple room this time, the other client won't receive it since it has already left the room. And if the second client enters the carrot room, then the first one gets notified about that. Here it can send a message that will be received by both. And then if one of them leaves the current room, then the other one will know about that from the news. And these were the basic functionalities that are required for using chat rooms and private chatting. What I still want to do is I want that instead of socket connections, I want to send messages to users. Because everything I have done until now, I did logged in as the user called Adam. And all these socket connections belong to him. 
So in the next video, I will make sure that the interaction happens between users from the Mongo database and not between these random long socket IDs.